Welcome into my beginner money guide for the biker businesses in GTA Online, where I'll be showing you how to maximize your earnings through the various MC content that was recently updated as a part of the Criminal Enterprises DLC. In order to get started, you'll need to hit up the internet and go over to Maze Bank Foreclosures, where you'll want to select clubhouses in the top right hand corner. There's a variety of locations available, each with corresponding businesses that you can buy in the local area that surrounds it. So whether you buy down here in the Vinewood area or come up to the Grand Sonora region, it doesn't really matter too much. All it really dictates is where you'll end up purchasing your businesses. Overall, my preferred location is Grand Sonora, where I am at the moment. The clubhouse and nearby businesses are a little bit cheaper and it's still pretty central, especially considering that all of the available bunkers and facilities are out in this general location as well. The only thing I'd advise though is don't buy anything in the Polito Bay region. While the price has come down a bit further, it's really not worth it. The travel time for literally every mission associated with it is torturous, and you'll only end up wanting to swap locations later when you inevitably get sick of it. In terms of upgrades, you don't really need much at this stage. The only thing worth considering is the custom bike shop. Not only does it give you a personal mod shop for all of the motorbikes in your clubhouse, but it also gives you access to bike deliveries that we'll be having a look at in a minute. Once that's done and dusted, you'll want to make your way over to your new clubhouse and head inside. Now in terms of making money from this place, your big ticket items are going to be associated with the illicit businesses that you can buy separately, but that can unfortunately be quite expensive. However, thanks to the latest update, your clubhouse now gives you a variety of ways to make money without having to spend anything extra. The first thing we'll have a look at is the bike deliveries that I mentioned earlier that requires you to have the custom bike shop add on for your clubhouse. Depending on RNG, they will spawn inside the garage once every 30 to 60 real life minutes, and you'll be notified once one becomes available. It's a super easy process, you just need to match up the mods with the client's requests inside the garage, and when it's ready, you'll just need to pay $10,000 for the upgrades, but don't worry, we'll be making that back and then some. Then it's just a simple matter of dropping off the vehicle at the destination with as little damage as possible, and bam, you'll get yourself an easy 50k. If however you can't afford the bike shop add-on or you don't want it, you can still make some money without having to buy the extra businesses. If you go back to your clubhouse and into the meeting room, you'll see these MC contracts up on the wall. The pay is a little bit mediocre, but requires no additional investment, so they're not too bad. Or alternatively, you could also consider doing a bar resupply mission by interacting with the bartender over in the corner. The objective is pretty easy. All you have to do is collect the van full of supplies and drive them back to the clubhouse. You will, however, get attacked along the way by three or four waves of enemies. You can either take them out on foot or just while you're driving. Either way, once you successfully resupply the bar, you'll get paid a little bit of money for your trouble. The payout is 20k in total, but you don't get it all at once, which is kind of annoying. Instead, you'll receive 5k per in-game day via the bag inside your clubhouse office. Overall, the side hustles aren't too bad, but the payouts are pretty minimal. To make the big bucks, you'll first need to buy yourself a business or two. There are five different business types in total, all of which have various locations scattered over the map. Generally speaking, you'll want to purchase businesses that are closest to your clubhouse to make access as easy as possible. So if you bought a clubhouse in Vinewood, stick with Vinewood. And the same for the Grand Sonora and Grapeseed area, if you happen to buy a clubhouse up that way like I suggested. Once again, just avoid the Polito Bay properties and you should be all good either way. In terms of what's most profitable, you can check out all of the details in this breakdown I've put together. Leading the charge is Coke, which will earn you a tidy 67.5k per hour in profit, then a bit of a drop down to the blue stuff at 44.4k per hour, which is then closely followed by cash, weed, and document forgery right down at the bottom. Really, the only ones I'd recommend going with are the top three. Beyond that, it starts to get a bit lackluster. Although weed may be worth considering if you already own a nightclub and plan on earning some extra money from the businesses that way. After you've made your selection and paid for it, you'll then want to set a waypoint to your new business and head over there to get things started. Once inside, you'll be given a short cutscene that explains a few of the basics, but eventually you'll get dropped inside the building where if you come over to the computer, you can start the setup mission. All of the MC setup missions revolve around the same premise. You collect a car from what is usually the opposite end of the map and then bring it back to the business. It's super easy and won't give you any trouble at all. You don't even come across enemies along the way. And if you do it in an invite only lobby, there's literally no threat whatsoever. 
After the setup, it'll take a few minutes for your staff members to arrive. Once they do though, production will begin, and within a few hours, you'll be able to make your first sale. Before we get onto that though, you're going to want to consider buying some upgrades for the business, which can once again be accessed by the computer inside the factory. Equipment and staff upgrades are the highest priority. They will help you to use supplies more efficiently and yield a better quality product overall, earning you a lot more money in the process. The only optional extra here is the security upgrade, which helps you to prevent raids on your business that rob you of your hard-earned product and force you to set it up again. A lot of people don't bother, as raids aren't super common, especially if you're following the solo methods that I'll be showing you in this video. But if you've got the extra cash and want to lower your chances even further, then by all means go ahead. And after the setup mission, you will also notice that you now have a full bar of supplies, which will eventually be turned into product that you can sell. Once those supplies have depleted though, production will stop and you'll no longer be earning money. So once you've run out, you'll need to make sure you get some more. To do that, you'll want to head over to the computer again, where once you're on the supply tab, you'll be presented with two options. Buy supplies or steal supplies. As long as you've got the upgrades that I discussed before, buying supplies is definitely going to be the way to go. However, if you're low on funds and you absolutely have to, you can steal supplies instead. The process can be absolutely excruciating though, so do be warned. The missions can be very annoying and they're not especially new player friendly either. The only time I'd say it's kind of worth it is if you're playing with lots of other people in your motorcycle club. In that situation, you each collect a package of supplies, which will top up your business quite nicely. But by yourself, you'll have to claw your way through a 10 to 15 minute mission, all to get a measly one bar of supplies. Often, even less than that, as it'll likely use half a bar immediately after dropping it off to continue with the production. To save those kinds of headaches, I highly advise that you buy your supplies instead. Not only does it rescue you from having to do literally dozens of annoying resupply missions, but it also allows you to spend that time making better money elsewhere. 75k is next to nothing these days, and a full rack of supplies will be delivered to your business within 10 to 15 minutes of placing the order. You can then easily make that money back by simply doing payphone hits, bike deliveries, or hell, even basic VIP missions like Sightseer and Headhunter will get you there pretty quickly. Either way, from the moment you have a full bar of supplies, it will take around two hours for that to process into saleable product. Make sure you always select the long distance delivery option. It's the only way to maximize your profits and stay ahead of the curve. As long as you keep an eye on your stock levels and follow this guide, you won't ever have to worry about failing a sell mission. Up to around one and a half bars of product will result in a one vehicle sale. Between that and two and a half bars of product will result in a two vehicle sale and anything above that will mean you have three or possibly even four vehicles to transport depending on the mission. One and two vehicle sales are very easy when playing solo, but three plus vehicles can be quite difficult, or in some cases even impossible, especially if you're new to the game. The good news is though, there's an easy way to remember it. One full rack of supplies, which we bought earlier for 75k, will always result in a one or two vehicle sale such as this one. So as long as you only ever buy one round of supply for each of your businesses and then sell before getting more, you'll be set up for success every time. With a bit more experience, a number of the three vehicle sales can actually be completed solo as well. Things like planes, helicopters and boat sales can be done by yourself once you've had a bit of practice and you have access to a fast helicopter or an oppressor to transport yourself between delivery vehicles. The only three vehicle sales I'd say are a definite no-no, regardless of experience or equipment, are the post-op vans and trash trucks. They're just too slow and are pretty much impossible to deliver solo. If you're planning on risking it with the three vehicle solo sales and you happen to either get post ops or trash trucks, don't worry too much. You do have the option of loading into a new session and re-rolling for a different mission. Make sure you set your spawn point to last location and then change into a new lobby. You will lose about half a bar of product, but in most situations that only amounts to 20 or 30k, which is far less than you'd lose from a failed sale. Once you load back in, just make your way back to the computer inside your business and start it up again, this time hoping for a different mission. A lot of people can't be bothered doing that, which is why I showed you how to guarantee a one or two vehicle sale. But if you want to wait that little bit longer and risk a bit of money, you certainly have the option to do it this way. 
Now, if you really want to risk it for the biscuit, there's also the opportunity for making a big bonus for every sale if you don't mind doing it in a public lobby instead of an invite only. I don't necessarily advise doing it this way, as the chance of someone blowing up your product and losing everything that you spent on supplies is quite high. But the payoff can be quite tempting to those that don't mind a bit of a challenge. For every person in the lobby, you will get an additional 2% of the overall sale price, up to a cap of 50%. On a big sale, that can mean the difference of several hundreds of thousands of dollars. But of course, you might lose it all as well. So for all of you gamblers and risk takers out there, this one could be for you. Another thing I want to go into a bit deeper are the raids that I spoke about earlier. They don't happen super often, but they can be quite a major setback if you're unprepared. They only happen once your business hits a certain threshold of product value. Once you hit that though, an invisible timer starts and after that expires, you run the risk of being raided. The stock thresholds and timers on the left are for businesses that don't have security upgrades, and the figures on the right are for the ones that do. As you can see, it does significantly reduce your chances of having an unexpected visit from the police. However, if you decide to stick to one or two vehicle sales like I suggested earlier, you'll rarely hit the threshold long enough for a raid to even trigger. If you're unlucky and happen to get one though, you'll just have to make sure to approach it very carefully. If you die under any circumstances, you'll lose all of your product and have to set up the business again. For that reason, you'll want to either keep your distance by killing the enemies with a helicopter or something similar like I'm doing now, or if you want to get up close and personal, just make sure that you've got an armoured vehicle or plenty of cover before engaging. There's a variety of different raids possible, but most of them just require you to kill the enemies and then sometimes retrieve the product or your workers or something like that and return them to the business. Another thing worth mentioning is expenses. The clubhouse and all of the businesses you buy have maintenance fees. The more you own, the higher those costs will be, and they can actually get pretty expensive, especially for new players. You only get charged these fees when you're actively in a motorcycle club, but they come in once every in-game day or 48 minutes real time, which can be a bit of a hit to your back pocket. If you're a little bit strapped for cash and want to avoid them, it's actually very easy to do so. Before that 48 minute mark hits, all you have to do is change lobbies, like I showed you before, via the online tab in the main menu. Once you load into a new session, you won't be charged for another full in-game day, even if you've been playing for hours up until that point. When you start moving up in the world and own multiple MC businesses, managing all of their stock levels can become quite an annoying task. Fortunately, there is a better way though. Introducing the Master Control Terminal, your one-stop shop for all things business management. With this at your fingertips, you can purchase supplies, launch sale missions, and manage almost every business in the game from this one location. Unfortunately, it does come at a steep price. To even get access to it, you'll first need to purchase an arcade from the Maze Bank Foreclosures website where we bought the clubhouse from. Once you've bought the arcade, you then have to buy the Master Control Terminal as an additional extra via the computer inside the office. At $1.7 million, it's quite an expensive price to pay strictly for convenience, but my god does it ever make things easier, and it's definitely worth considering once you've got more money stashed away. One of the best ways of earning money through your MC businesses is actually with the nightclub. Once you've connected them up with an assigned technician, they will start to passively accrue product down here in the warehouse. In order to cash in on this top-notch moneymaker, you will of course need to buy a nightclub property. If you've been on my channel a while, you probably already have one, as I've been recommending them for some time now. If not though, you'll once again want to go over to Maze Bank Foreclosures and select nightclubs. Location will depend entirely on your business setup in this neck of the woods. But if you're really struggling, I often advise people to go with the one at Mission Row. None of the upgrades are really necessary at this point. The only one you'll want to consider is adding extra floors to the storage in your warehouse. Yes, they are quite expensive, but they allow you to store more product, which ultimately means less sale missions and more money. But if you can't afford them right now, you can upgrade later and still make a bit of cash from the warehouse while you wait. You'll just have to check it regularly and do a few extra sales because of the reduced capacity. Once you've purchased the nightclub and set it up, you'll want to make your way over to the property and into the office, where you'll need to log on to the computer. To start making extra money on your MC businesses, you'll need to come down to Warehouse Management, which will present you with this screen. 
Here you can assign technicians to passively collect product from your MC businesses and any other relevant operations such as the bunker. The first technician is free, but the rest of them you have to pay for. They get increasingly more expensive as you go along, but once again you don't have to buy them all at once. You can stick with just one or two at first and then upgrade later. Ultimately, don't hire more technicians than you've got available businesses. Anything with a padlock symbol next to it means you don't own it yet. So only get techs for the ones that you've already purchased. Once they've been assigned, you just have to sit back, relax and wait for the money to roll in. It does take quite a while for the product to collect, but it requires next to no effort and could be a great source of income. To increase productivity and value, you do also have the option of upgrades. In terms of the warehouse though, the only thing you need to worry about is the equipment upgrade. But the staff upgrade can be quite useful as well for the other passive money method that the nightclub offers, for which I'll link a guide in the description below. And again, I'd say the security upgrade is your choice. The nightclub can be raided just like all of the other businesses, and it reduces the chance, much the same as I showed you before. You can sell all of your stock off at once, or you can sell off specific shipments and special orders for a bit of a bonus. But generally, I just like to wait for it to fill up to a decent level and then sell everything. When you hit that, you'll be ejected out of your nightclub and a sale mission will begin. Quite a variety can spawn, but fortunately they can all easily be completed solo without any problems. Later on, when you've got maxed out storage and are making big sales like this one, you'll have to buy the relevant delivery vehicle. But for smaller sales, the game provides everything you need, so you shouldn't need to worry about that for some time. And it's also worth noting that this product that we're selling now is completely separate from your normal MC sales. You continue to make money from those exactly like I showed you before, but on top of that you also get this additional revenue stream from your MC businesses interacting with the nightclub. It's super OP and one of the best forms of passive money around. It basically means you're getting two forms of income for every business you own. Pretty dope honestly, and definitely worth working towards. But yeah, that's pretty much a wrap for today, folks. I plan on doing a dedicated nightclub guide in the coming weeks, where I'll expand on some of the stuff I covered today, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you found this video useful though, please help it to be seen by more people by tapping the thumbs up button down below. And if you're new to the content, definitely think about subscribing as well. We're a Rockstar Games exclusive channel where I provide top-notch news and guides for all things GTA Online. Until we meet again, you bunch of legends, I am Red Knight Trait, and I'll catch you on the next one.